Hello everyone. So welcome back to our latest lecture session. So again, we'll have our brief uh, summary of what we discussed in the last uh, lecture class, right? So we are talking about alkalinity, and we looked at uh, it in terms of the acid neutralizing capacity, and in general because the natural systems only contain or usually uh, not only contain, I guess, the predominant acid-base system is the uh, carbonate system. We usually define the theoretical alkalinity in terms of the carbonate species and calculate the amount of acid that would take to neutralize the relevant uh, deprotonated forms of your particular uh, carbonate system, right? And that is why we end up titrating it to or we end up titrating it to 4.5. And uh, when would your theoretical, theoretical definition of alkalinity be at odds with what you would measure practically by titrating with uh, the acid in the lab, I guess, right? Uh, when you have other relevant acid based systems. Uh, you know with pKa values greater than 4.5 right which can again consume or you know neutralize some of your acid yes in that case again we looked at the relevant aspects in detail so we won't go into that uh, further and then we start discussing about uh, acidity right so alkalinity is about the acid neutralizing capacity of your particular solution and acidity will obviously give an idea about the base neutralizing capacity of solution Anyway, SDT is uh, rare, not rarely, I guess, less widely used or applicable uh, when compared to alkalinity, which is uh, used everywhere in almost all your relevant calculations. So again, we are going to go through and look at uh, uh, SDT right now, right? So SDT, right? We start discussing about that. That we say is equal to or similar to the base neutralizing capacity. Yes, that's something we discussed. And I believe in the last class we also talked about uh, that unlike alkalinity. We have you know three kinds of acidity that people look at. Uh, one is the one which you would look at the mineral acidity, right? And next we look at phenolphthalein acidity, phenolphthalein acidity, and this I believe is also called methyl orange acidity, right? based on its uh, you know uh, the type of uh, uh, indicator that you are using again phenolphthalein acidity based on the type of indicator that you are using and then uh, total acidity and depending on the textbooks that we or you are going to look at let's say you know people sometimes think of phenol acidity too as total acidity but you know there are three distinct uh, kinds of acidities right and we are going to look at each of them in greater detail right so again SDT is nothing but base neutralizing capacity, right? Uh, so you are, uh, let us say in the lab, how would you measure that? You know, you are going to take a uh, base uh, of known concentration in your particular burette and keep titrating that against your solution until you reach an uh, equivalence point, right? And what is this equivalence point about? When the amount of base in this case added is equivalent to the amount of acid initially present in your solution. But obviously, if it is uh, diprotic or triprotic system, you are going to have multiple equivalence points, right? So again, here uh, looks like we are going to look at three equivalence points. So let us look at what they are in greater detail, right? So first case is when we look at mineral acidity or methyl orange. So in, uh, the equivalence point we look at is 3.7 and we will see why 3.7, uh, we will go back to that uh, soon, right? And what else here please? Uh, so here what are we trying to measure? What are we trying to measure here, right? it measures the strong acids, it measures the strong acids present in the solution, right? It will give you an idea about only the strong acids present in the solution. So the key here is that strong acid, so H2CO3 with a pKa of uh, 6.3 and the pKa2 of around what is it now 10.3, you know we do not call that a strong acid but HCl, HNO3 uh, and so on, we look at that in terms them in terms of uh, strong acids because of their low pKa values and ability to donate the proton or deprotonate even at low pH values, right? So this particular mineral acidity or methyl orange acidity can or is only trying to calculate or measure the amount of these strong acids present in your solution, right? So let us look at why pH uh, 3.7 now, right? The key is that it only wants to measure the strong acids and not the H2CO3 that is present in your system, so, right? Let us look at obviously the relevant uh, carbonate speciation system. So this is something that we looked at uh, previously too, right? Uh, I believe we looked at this with respect to uh, Vimintech and developing uh, it for alkalinity. 
So, I believe the total concentration we have is 0 0.01 molar and we have a figure where uh, x axis is pH and y axis is concentration. So, now I only want to measure the strong acids right obviously the key is then the pK is going to be low and obviously I do not want to uh, measure the amount of H2CO3 present right. So, what is that now? So, as we see it was around 3.7 what was it the equivalence point right. And as you can see from here at 3.7 let us say a pH of 3.7 what do you see here you know H2CO3 does not start dissociating yet or any base you know if any base is added to your solution will H2CO3 be able to neutralize that at uh, until the pH of 3.7 or in this region no why is that as you see in this entire region until 3.7 you know H2CO3 does not dissociate into H plus and HCO3 minus right. So, obviously, if I am not trying to measure H2CO3, but only trying to measure the strong acids, which region will I until what pH will I titrate to until that pH when H2CO3 is not going to dissociate and that as you see is around 3.7 and that is the reason we end up measuring or having an equivalence point, equivalence point is 3.7 for your mineral acidity right. So, that is the key here that we are not trying to measure the H2CO3, but only the strong acids that is one particular case yes. So, let us move on to the next particular aspect and here again uh, one way to understand this is your reference is H2CO3 right. So, looks like I miss writing down the relevant equation we will come back to that. So, keep in mind that uh, if you are trying to uh, write down the component balance and uh, understand it in terms of H total if you have the reference or you know your one of the components as H2CO3 you will be able to uh, write the relevant equation. So, I obviously, I miss writing the relevant equation. So, we are going to go back to that right. So, we understood how and so here in this case acidity is going to be equal to what now? First, we are going to write down all the acids present. So, only strong acids. So, that will be only in the form of H plus in this case right and then again the case we are considering is when we have only the carbonate system here and obviously, any other strong acids uh, present are going to dissociate right. So, we are going to have H plus and we obviously, need to subtract all this uh, bases here right. So, it is going to be obviously, OH minus here right minus and what other bases do we look at here. We obviously, look at CO3 2 minus you know in this region so this is CO3 2 minus and HCO3 minus and obviously, HCO3 minus can consume one proton. So, you know we are going to have a coefficient of 1 for it. CO3 2 minus can consume uh, what do we say 2 protons right and the reference is with respect to H2CO3 yes and that is why we are going to have 2 coefficient, uh, coefficient of 2 here. So, it is going to be minus HCO3 minus minus 2 times of CO3 2 minus right and obviously, what are the units here because we already looked at the relevant coefficients here right. The units are not equivalents per liter, but moles per liter yes again the units for this particular uh, these particular variables 1, 2, 3, 4 are moles per liter and you will end up with uh, acidity in terms of equivalents per liter right. Again you know to understand this we mentioned that uh, we can look at the system with respect to H plus and H 2 CO 3 as our components. Uh, so, what is the uh, uh, you know uh, relatively unique aspect here usually if you remember whenever we analyze the system we take H plus and the most deprotonated form which is CO3 2 minus as our components, but because our reference right we are trying to not measure H2CO3 and the reference here is H2CO3. So, we are going to try to look at the system in terms of H2CO3 and not CO3 2 minus. So, if that is the case and I write down H total right or let me just plug this in here and not plug this in write it down in the form of tableau. So, what are the species that you would expect H plus OH minus uh, we are not going to write H2CO3 because that is not something we are measuring here right HCO3 minus or even if I write that let us see why do we do not need that H2CO3 and here again H2CO3 total H2CO3 and CO3 2 minus. So, how many H plus do I need? So, I am going to have 1 and how many OH minus minus 1 HCO3 minus how do I form that by H2CO3 minus H plus right. And that is the reason why we end up with minus here again and how do you form H2CO3 by 0 and 1 
and CO3 how do you form that by 1 H2CO3 and minus 2 H plus right and more or less if you look at it that is H total and that is similar to your SDT right when is that now H total is equal to SDT when you choose H plus and H2CO3 among your components right so that is what that is for sake of your understanding here. So again what are we measuring here we are only measuring the strong acids which will be in the form of H plus and obviously we need to subtract the uh, other bases uh, which in this case we are only assuming HCO3 minus and CO3 2 minus and why do we take the coefficient of 1 and 2 here because CO3 2 minus can neutralize 2 protons before you know uh, uh, moving on to its protonate state which is H2CO3 and HCO3 minus can take 1 proton so that is the case we have the relevant coefficients here. So, we until now we looked at mineral acidity and obviously pH 3.7. So, let us move on to the next case I guess right. So, next case obviously is uh, phenolphthalein acidity again based on the indicator that we look at. So, obviously the pH we are looking at is 8.3 and again uh, let us see why. So, in this case what are we trying to measure with this particular acidity I guess when you titrate the system with a base until you achieve a pH of or reach a pH of 8.3. So, why is that now the acidity I guess we are going to obviously develop the equation later. So, again in the earlier uh, particular what is it now uh, mineral acidity we only try to look at the strong acids present and which certainly would have to rule out H2CO3. In this case uh, phenolphthalein acidity right we are going to go a bit further we are obviously going to uh, measure all the strong acids present we are also going to measure H2CO3 right we are going to measure H2CO3 but obviously not HCO3 minus. So, in this case we are going to look at all the strong acids right and then H2CO3 and thus we need to come up with an end point that will help us you know measure that when we titrate uh, your solution or our solution against a base right. Let us look at uh, what it is. So, here we are trying to measure uh, what do we say strong acids obviously and H2CO3. So, this is what we are trying to measure right. So, let us just look at the relevant uh, graph once and let us see how we can do that. So, H2CO3 right as you see this is the profile for H2CO3 and this is the profile for HCO3 minus and this is the profile for CO3 2 minus right. So, let us look at this here and you see H2CO3 is still in considerable quantities until around this point. So, if I want to measure all the H2CO3 minus I titrate until this particular uh, what do we say pH with the base right. I keep adding a base until I reach which point now this particular point and why is this point because you want to exhaust all the H2CO3 present in the solution because you are trying to measure H2CO3. So, obviously in this region what am I measuring? I am measuring all the H2CO3 present and obviously if there are any other strong acids present they are going to be titrated here in this region in this region as in in this pH right. So, now the key is that uh, if you look at this particular equivalence point your H2CO3 is not the reference anymore, but HCO3 minus is the reference right. So, when we looked at your what is it now uh, mineral acidity uh, we chose our reference as H2CO3, but in this case it is not H2CO3 anymore uh, we are trying to also measure H2CO3 the reference you can think of the reference when you choose your components or try to understand the equation with respect to your acidity that you are going to have the reference as HCO3 minus. So, let us look at what the relevant equation will turn out to be right. So, let us go back here and now acidity. So, obviously you need to measure all the strong acids. So, that say I am using H plus to uh, understand them because all the strong acids are going to reprotonate and I am also going to measure the concentration of H2CO3 right. These are the acids that I am going to look at right these are the acids and I need to subtract the bases. So, bases are going to be certainly OH minus because if it is uh, the pH is high you need to uh, look at the relevant acidity right or the effect of high pH on acidity that is why you are obviously going to uh, subtract the base and obviously any other uh, uh, what is it now bases and in this carbonate system what are the other bases that are present. So, obviously CO3 2 minus not HCO3 minus why is that the reference here in this case is HCO3 minus with respect to HCO3 minus you are trying to understand the system right. So, here you are going to have OH minus minus CO3 2 minus. So, those people who are following it keenly you might ask or you know the question might arise in their minds. 
So, if you look at the uh, equation for mineral acidity, we looked at I think minus 2 times CO3 2 minus, but why aren't we looking at or you know why do not we have a coefficient of minus 2 and only why do we have a coefficient of only minus 1 here in this particular phenolphthalein acidity, right. So, the key is that uh, earlier the reference was H2CO3. So, CO3 2 minus can take 2 protons, right, uh, but in this case the reference is only HCO3 minus. So, let us say if we are think of it in terms of difference, right, uh, it is not a true difference obviously. HCO3 minus and CO3 2 minus differ by only one, one proton, right. So, earlier H2CO3 and CO3 2 minus they differ by 2 protons. So, that is the reason here because the reference is HCO3 minus, we look at the coefficients uh, from that point of view. So, same case here with respect to H2CO3 because H2CO3 can only give out one proton before transforming into HCO3 minus, which is our reference, right, or CO3 2 minus can only take one proton before transforming into HCO3 minus, which is our reference, right. So, this is where our coefficients come from, you know, 1 H plus for H2CO3 because it can donate one and minus H plus minus 1 here because CO3 2 minus can take 1 H plus. So, that is the relevant equation here H plus plus H2 CO3 minus OH minus and minus CO3 2 minus and most people end up using or trying to calculate phenolphthalein acidity. Why is that? Again uh, most people end up uh, looking at this particular acidity when you know people talk about acidity. Why is that? Because you know we are trying to uh, measure all the H2 CO3 and the strong acids present which in effect means you are titrating to a value which is 8.3 here obviously, it is slightly higher than pH 7, but around or you know still nearby the uh, uh, pH 7, right. So, that is the reason people usually look at uh, let us say uh, uh, this phenolphthalein acidity because it will give you an idea about an idea again about the uh, natural uh, systems you know their ability to neutralize a base if you go till around pH 7 or in this case obviously pH 8.3. But obviously, as with our background, let us say with our fundamental background, we know there is one more uh, level, right, and that is going to be the total acidity. And why is that? Because you still have CO3 2 minus present or you know HCO3 minus present. So, in the next case, we are going to look at which is the total acidity, we are going to look at CO3 2 minus as the reference and also measure HCO3 minus and H2CO3, right. Again, before we go further, uh, just to understand the system, we said the reference was what now HCO3 minus. Let us try to uh, look that up, not look that up, pardon me, uh, try to understand how we arrive at this, right. And what are the different species H plus, OH minus, and what else CO3 2 minus, HCO3 minus, and H2CO3. And how many H plus do I need to form? 1 H plus 1, and obviously 0 here, and here it is going to be minus 1 and 0. And how can I form HCO3 minus? By 1 HCO3 minus and minus 1, and thus you see you know that particular coefficient here minus 1 and how can I form HCO3 minus just 1 HCO3 minus and no role for H plus right. That is why we have no term here with respect to HCO3 minus again the key is that HCO3 minus here is our reference here and why is it that we are looking at HCO3 minus as the reference because the equivalence point needs to be around 8.3 so that we end up measuring all the H2CO3. So, you know they are interlinked obviously and how do I end up measuring H2CO3? Uh, in terms of uh, the components or expressing H2CO3 in terms of the components here. So, 1 HCO3 minus and 1 H plus and that is what you see here when you are writing it as uh, where is this now H2CO3 and so obviously H total in this case will be what now H plus minus OH minus minus CO3 2 minus plus H2CO3 right. And again thus in this case is going to be similar to this equation as you can see and obviously only when you choose HCO3 minus as your component, right. So, that is the key you know earlier we chose H2CO3 as the component and then uh, the relevant equations are going to be different and HCO3 minus here is our component or the reference and that is why your H total equation is going to be different, right. So, next uh, next step. Uh, so, here we are going to measure total acidity, right and the pH is 10.5. So, obviously, we need to understand why we are going to look at 10.5, right. That is obviously the key here. So, we are going to go back to that. So, again keep in mind that uh, some people also think of phenolphthalein acidity as total acidity, but that is not strictly speaking, not strictly speaking, it is not uh, true. So, there is something else called total acidity, right. Again acidity we are looking at base neutralizing capacity. So, what does that mean? We want to sum up all the acids that can neutralize a base. So, earlier we looked at strong acids, the next aspect we looked at was strong acids and H2CO3 
And next aspect which we are going to consider now obviously is you know uh, by logical uh, you know understanding or analysis we see that it is going to be strong acids H2CO3 and also HCO3 minus. So, what do we end up measuring here right we end up measuring strong acids or we want to measure the strong acids we want to measure H2CO3 and we also want to measure HCO3 minus right and this is what the total acidity gives you an idea about. So, let us now go back to the figure and see why a pH of 10.5 is necessary right, but the key obviously is you want to also measure HCO3 minus right. So, earlier when we were trying to measure H2CO3 right, we end up titrating until that point or until that pH when all the H2CO3 would be consumed which approximately turns out to be 8.3, but obviously if I am also trying to measure HCO3 minus. So, what do I need to go to? So, obviously 10.5 I guess right or 10.7 right around this particular value what was the value given okay 10.5. So, people end up measuring or going to 10.5 right. So, you know again keep in mind that we are not uh, measuring all the HCO3 by minus, but more or less most of it right. So, anyway that is the key here and that is the reason we end up choosing uh, what do we say uh, 10 po 10 point, uh, 5 I guess right. Pardon me here it is not here it is somewhere out here I guess right. And obviously, the reference here is that it is going to be uh, uh, CO 3 2 minus right. Let us look at the relevant equation there. So, the reference is going to be CO 3 2 minus right and uh, what next please? We are trying to write down the equation here acidity and that is going to be equal to all the sum of the acids. So, it is going to be H plus plus 2 times H 2 CO 3 and why is that? The reference now is CO 3 2 minus and obviously, 1 times HCO3 minus right and minus OH minus and obviously, what is this as you can see is the total acidity right. So, let us try to understand this in terms of our components one. So, what is the reference here it is CO3 2 minus now and H plus obviously is always our component. So, let us try to understand the system from that point of view. So, we have uh, what do we have here please we have the relevant species they are H plus OH minus H 2 CO 3, H CO 3 minus and CO 3 2 minus right and so H plus 0 and 1, 0 and minus 1 and how do I come to H 2 CO 3 1 and 2 because you know uh, 2 H plus plus 1 CO 3 2 minus would end up as H 2 CO 3 and that is what you see here and obviously, the key is that now the reference or the component is CO 3 2 minus, but with H CO 3 minus what do you see it is going to be 1 here and 1 here and here obviously, it is going to be 1 and 0. So, obviously, H total in this case is concentration of H plus minus OH minus. So, we are just summing up this here H total right plus 2 times of H 2 CO 3 plus H CO 3 minus right. So, that is the uh, case uh, we look at yes. And so, thus in this case obviously, as you see this equation when you write up H total and with the unit with the components of CO 3 2 minus and H plus you will end up with a H total that is similar or you know the same as total acidity right. So, again we looked at three aspects uh, one for strong acids, one for strong acids and H 2 CO 3 and the last one for strong acids H 2 CO 3 and H CO 3 minus right. Again why H CO 3 minus because it can also neutralize the base. Uh, by donating one proton and you know transforming into CO3 2 minus which is its deprotonated form right. So, let us move on I believe we are going to look at the effects of uh, addition of acids and bases. So, we looked at this in the context of uh, what is it now our affinity. So, here let us look at uh, a particular equation let us say and then try to un understand that. Uh, so, let us say you know we are going to add let us say first an acid right and then second we are going to see a case of adding a base and then third case we are going to look at addition of uh, carbon dioxide right. Uh, so, what are one of the equations I guess let us see if it changes for different uh, cases it uh, strictly speaking should not. So, let us take total acidity for now uh, H plus right what is total acidity let us work it out for one case total acidity is equal to what now H plus and what are the other acids present 2 times of H 2 CO 3 plus CO3 H CO3 minus pardon me 
right minus OH minus right. So if you add an acid right if I add one equivalent per liter of acid right how is that going to transform the equation so I am going to end up increasing my H plus. So that means when I add acid it is going to end up increasing my acidity right by one equivalent per liter. So now let us move on to our particular case of the base and what are we looking at here. So base we are adding if I add one equivalent per liter of base to my solution. So what is the total acidity or acidity going to how is it going to change. So here by adding a base I am going to increase the OH minus concentration. So in effect what does that mean I am bringing down the value of the total acidity right. So that is what it means. So when I increase the uh, concentration of the base present here or you know add a base to the solution. So the initial acidity will come down right or will decrease. And how I guess if I add 1 equivalent per liter of base I am going to have 1 equivalent per liter of my particular acid right. So that is the case again you know we need to understand that you know acidity is nothing but base neutralizing capacity right. So if you end up increasing the concentration of your acid what does that mean you have more compounds that can neutralize your base. But obviously if you are adding a base right an extra load on your system so thus you are decreasing the acidity or the ability to neutralize a base in your particular case right. So let us see with respect to CO2 let us just try to apply that in this case. So obviously we know that CO2 can dissociate into H2CO3 right in the gaseous to aqueous right and H2CO3 we know can either go to what is it now H plus plus HCO3 minus or it can also dissociate to 2H plus and CO3 2 minus right. Right. So let us say if I add uh, you know uh, 1 equivalent per liter let us see what the effect is going to be. So if uh, let us consider this case first right. So H plus is going to increase and HCO3 minus is going to increase yes. And so in this case if for 1 equivalent per liter let us say increase the total acidity though the total acidity is going to increase by uh, what is it please units of 2 right 2 equivalents per liter why is that. So if it is just H2CO3 you see there are, there are 2 units here and if it is dissociating into H plus and HCO3 minus you see that they are H and HCO3 minus 2 units so that is 2 equivalents per liter. But obviously if you look at the equation for let us say phenolphthalein acidity phenolphthalein acidity though. And what was that equation let me remember that or try to just analyze that here. So the reference is HCO3 minus right so it is going to be the first the acids present reference is HCO3 minus H2CO3 right minus the bases present which are OH minus and CO3 2 minus. But for phenolphthalein acidity how would your particular system change right this is phenolphthalein acidity not total acidity right. How would the system change when you add carbon dioxide right we know the total acidity changes by 2 equivalents per liter. So CO2 can dissociate into H2CO3 right so obviously if I am adding more CO2 what does that mean uh, the phenolphthalein acidity phenolphthalein acidity would change by or increase by 1 equivalent per liter. So when I increase CO2 right by 1 equivalent per liter the total acidity changes or increases by 2 equivalents per liter but the phenolphthalein acidity would only increase by 1 equivalent per liter. Again uh, so we looked at uh, various aspects right until now uh, the three, 3 kinds of acidities and then we started discussing about the effects of acids and bases. Uh, just to refresh your memory right uh, if you look at if you remember that uh, with respect to uh, alkalinity which looks at the acid neutralizing capacity right we saw that when we bubble carbon dioxide through the solution the acidity does not change right and why is that the key was that with respect to alkalinity we had a particular uh, set of definitions that we uh, try to understand right as in you know when we put in H2CO3 dissociates into either H plus or HCO3 minus which in that alkalinity equation cancel each other out or can further dissociate into 2H plus and CO3 2 minus and again cancel each other out because we need to look at the equivalents and CO3 2 minus has a equation there I mean let me write this down here. Uh, where can I write this down ok I will just try to what did we have with respect to alkalinity the definition was OH minus right uh, plus HCO3 minus so all the bases plus 2 times of CO3 2 minus minus H plus. 
So when we bubbled carbon dioxide through it, what did we see? Carbon dioxide can go to H2CO3, right, which can dissociate into HCO3 minus plus H plus and also further to H plus and CO3 2 minus, right. So if it stops at this step, you see H plus and HCO3 minus, they cancel each other out even though they are produced, yes. And if it goes to complete dissociation, you see that 2 H plus are given out, right, minus 2 there and CO3 2 minus 1, but you have a coefficient here. So again, they cancel out. So whenever you increase carbon dioxide concentration or bubble it through your water, there is no effect on alkalinity, right, it is still a constant. But that is not the case here when we look at acidity and why is that? Uh, obviously, you know, uh, we have different cases here again for uh, one for what is it now with the total acidity and one for phenolphthalein acidity and so on. So obviously for total acidity when we look at the relevant variables, you see that when you add carbon dioxide, we notice that in it increases by 2 equivalents per liter when carbon dioxide increases 1 equivalent per liter. But for phenolphthalein acidity, if you look at the relevant variables, you see that it only increases by 1 equivalent per liter, right. So uh, we are done with discussing alkalinity and acidity which are remarkably important aspects in uh, natural and engineered systems. So in the next class we are going to look at the applications, right. Uh, so uh, and we are going to heavily look at uh, using Vimintic again and uh, with that I will end today's lecture session and thank you.